Oh, it's Eugene from the Try Guys. I just watched this the other day. I love Eugene. I love him so much. Right off the bat, everybody's way more conservative. Very dramatic opening, just at the very start. Like a modern dance. This is something I feel like we've all been waiting for, like his coming out. So artistic. I really like that he made it into an art form. Seems to be pointing out gender stereotypes, I think. But what do I know about gender stereotypes? And it's just basically the kids copying the parents. That's pretty much what it is right now. Oh my God, this is so beautiful. I'm pretty sure like that means like his dad was not supportive. He just felt more comfortable in being around his mom because he didn't feel like manly. Wow. This is really like a really cool creative coming out video. I've never seen anything like this from anyone. Uh oh. You're at the church. Okay, so a church going against your religion. Oh, so that's like what he's supposed to do. Oh, that's relatable to all of us, I think. It's a metaphor for the oppression that uh, organized religion uh, has you know, carried out against gay people throughout, throughout history but I just want to break free. I just want to be me. The choreography, it's amazing for this video. Beautiful scenery. Go off! That's the one you want. Damn, I didn't know that Eugene could do any of this and he's just like, look at me, I can dance. We love when we see proper choreography with two boys symbolizing, um, I don't know, love. Oh, wow. And she's like the first person in the video that's actually supporting him rather than everybody else just trying to push him. He's like, oh, he, here he is, a drag. Go off, kimchi. Oh my god, is that Mayhem? Oh my god, Reese. Ah! <laughs> Oh my gosh, is that Rhea? Oh, Jasmine, oh my god, <laughs> no, all of them. I'm like, I'm, I just love this scene. It's just like, he finally found a group where he could just like be himself. So this looks like a, just a celebration of, of pride. Oh. Oh my, that was Paul's, that represented Paul's. No, I can't. And all the colors stripped away now, and he's beaten and broken. Ah. I cannot even deal with that. Hey, kind of been there. I've been hit and punched and kicked because of being gay. See, now there's people like in his family who are trying to like help him up, but then there's other the other sides just arguing with him. I feel like a majority of the community watching this right now can relate. Uh. Damn it. <laughs> um, uh, I can relate. seem to be arguing with each other. Some are for, some are against. He's just gonna be himself no matter like everything else going around him. Man, this is like, I'm so enthralled. Like I can't even talk. It's just beautiful. Well, that's just showing off at that point. Look how gorgeous he looks. Because it's not just a happy ending. People like to like tie it up in a pretty package and it's still going on. Their background, but it's still very much so affecting him. And then he's back. This is representing his childhood home. Eugene Li Yang. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece of work.
You did an amazing job with this. You see this, and this is very loosely a story that we've all experienced, everyone in the LGBT community. It's moving because it's not everything is happy and rainbow colored. I mean, you fight hard to get that that rainbow at the end of the storm. It's cool to see him take aspects from his culture and things that relate to him, put it into a music video or a beautiful dance video and give you a story of what real life is for um, someone like him. If he can be that brave and, um, you know, continue to live his life without hardship and strife, then maybe I can too. We have more to show you in a second, but that was Eugene Lee Yang's coming out video. He's from the popular YouTube channel, The Try Guys, yeah. Eugene had publicly identified as queer, but never gave specifics or insight into his sexuality until releasing this video. I respect that. Everyone needs to come out in the way that is most comfortable for them. No one should be outed. No one should out you. You should make the decision when you're ready. With June being Pride Month and two very well known YouTubers coming out this month, all the reactors in this episode identify as being part of the LGBTQ plus community so that we can get a better idea of what that experience has been like across generations in 2019. That's absolutely incredible. That is so dope. People need to have these conversations and I'm glad that we have this platform in order to do it. We've gotten in touch with both of the creators that we're going to feature in this episode who have given us their blessing to react to their videos so that we can keep the discussion going. Amazing. We can all relate to these videos, and I think it's awesome that they gave us our blessing. So next we have Daniel Howell's video. Oh, I'm so proud of him. I watched this one and I literally cried. This is a cut down version since the full video was too long to work in an episode of our show, but after we're gonna stop down so you can watch the whole thing. Okay. I feel nervous that I'm gonna cry. <laughs> what is Dan's sexuality? <laughs> Spoiler alert, I'm not straight. Sex. <laughs> I love him already. In the list of things that identify a person, one of the most important for other people to know... For other sexuality. people, literally, for if that's sex it. ...is the primal force propelling all of these humans forward by their hips, they have to know, are we gonna f or like... <laughs> oh my god, this is so funny. <laughs> it's so stupid, like, why sexual preference is such a thing. And it's all fear-based. People are presumed to be straight. If you're not, then at some point you have to come out. Yeah, it's infuriating. Whole thing. Or people might just try and guess based on something you do or the way you act because mm -hmm. of stereotypes. So this yeah. is something you have to He really had to deal with that for so long and it's absolutely so upsetting. So strap yourselves in and let me tell you a queer little story about a boy named Dan. A young boy. I loved being the center of attention. People I said bet I you did. But a boy in the 90s being happy and generally polite acting sounds kind of gay if you ask me. <laughs> I was six years old, running around the playground when two brothers come up to me, aged uh -oh. seven and eight, and the younger one pushes me to the ground, kicks me in the stomach, and just says, gay. Yeah. That word in elementary school was like, uh, that word. spread like wildfire. This was the first time I ever heard that word. Well, I don't know what the heck gay means, but apparently- Six it means years old. Floor, so I don't know what the heck gay means, but apparently it means people kick you on the floor, so that ain't good. But this whole primary school journey was really just an amuse-bouche for the full six course tasting menu of suffering that would be secondary school. I went to- a Well, he's at a point in his life where he can step back and laugh at it all, kind of, which is wonderful. That's the perspective we should have. I went to an all boys school. I mean, I bet like, especially if you're like discovering your sexuality in like an all boys school and you turn out to like boys, oh my God, so this must be a hassle. There I was sat in English class, my friend next to me. I watch as he, delicately removes a pencil from its case. <laughs> oh, the graphics are really cute. His eyes are so bright and beautiful, yet they seem so sad and deep with emotion. I wish I could just understand. Oh, f I think I'm a bit gay. You're telling me this whole time- <laughs> Oh my I God, this is so funny. <laughs> I wish I could just understand. Oh, f I think I'm a bit gay. You're telling me this whole time I actually have been the bad thing that people keep calling me. Oh my God, that quote right there. Oh, do you hear that faint hum? Something coming from a deep, dark place too powerful to control. 
It's the self-hatred. Oh, God, honey. A new word hit the theater nerd goth band kid corner that would change my world forever. Bisexual. <laughs> Honestly. It was a good term because it was a catch-all for anyone who felt sexually confused or curious that didn't want to commit to something stronger. We didn't have that option, though. Me. When I came out, I didn't have that. Regardless of whatever the 2006 teenagers' thoughts and feelings were, being bi is valid and should not be excused away or erased by anyone. Thank you. Facts. Bi erasure is like one of the biggest, I don't know, and I'm speaking from personal experience, but like it's such a big issue in the community right now. From this moment, I was a loud and proud raving by <laughs> to my close friends and strangers. At least he thought so. To my close friends and strangers on the internet who saw my clearly labeled sexual preference on my MySpace page. I forgot MySpace is a thing. Then I entered the dark ages. As quickly as they arrived into my life, my emo friend group vanished into the night. This is when the bullying at school really stepped its <laughs> up. The thing that people used to say offhand to me in a corridor. That's one way to put it. People used to sing songs about me being gay on the bus while my fellow nerds sat around me just stared awkwardly out of the window. And once a guy put his hand around my throat and pushed my head against a coat peg in the locker room while everyone was watching and just slapped me for five minutes. I never cried or got angry or fought back because then I'd be giving them what they wanted. I feel that. Um, I've had this kind of discrimination and bigotry in front of teachers when I was growing up and nothing was done. After just years of violence, I finally fought back and I, I'm not an advocate for violence of any kind, but it was literally in self-defense. But this way of dealing with things definitely had an impact on my relationship with emotion going into life. I became a total outcast. No one wanted to come near me out of fear that they get targeted too, so. No one ever stood up for me. The world was clearly telling me if I ever wanted to be accepted by anyone, or in my particular environment, survive, I couldn't be gay. I was afraid of it. Literally homophobic of myself. I'm homophobic of myself. Yes, that's, you just start to be like, oh my God, like I'm disgusting. Like no one's gonna accept me. I go away for the summer break and come back to school quiet and serious and fully straight. Right. But I was so afraid of sexuality. I didn't even want to do anything straight in case I had some weird gay panic. I think that's something that happens a lot. I can't stand out. I gotta fit in. I gotta constantly watch what I do, which watch what I say. I used to ask God in case he was there to please just make me straight and everyone stop. I said I that so no many end. times. One evening I thought, f it, and I attempted suicide. I knew people who committed suicide because they couldn't live with the pain and the rejection. I pretended it never happened and I didn't tell anyone. I, I used to cut in like middle school and all that stuff and just do all those types of things. So like, I understand like those dark places. And I didn't tell anyone until now, literally. Oh, this is so sad. I'm so glad I failed for so many reasons. For the people in my life, for the future I would have wasted. The most important being that I thought I was trapped in a situation forever when in reality... The I have a very I similar in instance in my life where I was at my lowest and that was actually when I came out to my mom as a teenager who's always been a proponent of gay rights and an activist. It was still the hardest thing I ever did. It was also the night that I had tried to hurt myself. So I very much relate to what he is saying. I want anyone that's ever felt like this to realize you are never trapped. There is always hope. I just have to be just for that. <laughs> my light at the end of the tunnel was university. Signed up for a Twitter account to run my mouth off and then <laughs> bam. So my name is Dan. My YouTube story <laughs> begins. I did not grow up with YouTube or with uh, computers. And this is when through the magic of the internet, I met Phil. And oh, Dan and Phil! We are real best friends, companions through life, and especially to anyone that has experienced the kind of self-hatred that I've dealt with, one person accepting you can make all the difference. Absolutely. I was lucky I had my daughters, my four daughters, and two sisters who love me. There was a point around 2011 where the relationship with my audience shifted from- Yeah. Some people started to really dig into my private life to find out information about me that 
I wasn't ready to share. Oh, that's invasive. So I just decided to put anything to do with my sexuality in a box to come back to later. As yeah, that's I crazy. Still, and I wanted to understand my identity on my own terms and timeline and not just have it hijacked as fuel for people's sexual fantasies or some headline in an article. And I can't even imagine how scared he was. I have a platform and a following of millions of people, many of whom I know have been through exactly what I have. And if I tell my story as painful and flip floppy and <laughs> flawed as it is, I know it will mean something to someone. Him just talking about it, it's gonna help so many kids. And I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of him for doing that. I don't like the stereotypes and drama that come with all this terminology, so I'm just not gonna use it. Thing is, gender identity is- <laughs> Oh my god, I love him. Icons of masculinity aren't really a big part of my life. Might as well call me a f***ing formless blob, that sounds more relatable. For <laughs> formless blob. blob. Out there, rise up! Uh, I don't have to do anything. So he's anything. got a sense of humor about I himself. I love that. But to come full circle, I know that even today, deep in my heart, the word gay scares me because that's how I've been conditioned my whole life. Wow. So you know, I finally have to just confront and accept this. Yes. I'm gay. Oh look, didn't spontaneously <laughs> combust. Well, there we go. That was a lot of stress about nothing, wasn't it? One of the other big fears holding me back was honestly that I wouldn't be accepted by the community. Mm. I know that it's a big pride flag covering a lot so of So he was afraid of being rejected by gay people. Most of it is amazing, but there is a lot of drama within it right now. It's so much drama. Oh, it, it ain't right just right now. I had to tell my story so people would understand me and these things, why coming out is still a big deal because queer people are often invisible and suffering yep. until they have to do it. Oh yeah. Some queer people exist. Choosing not to accept them is not an option. Yeah. Queer people exist, honey. If anyone watching this that isn't out, it's okay. Yeah. You're okay. Ooh. You were born this way. Love him. Just know that living your truth with pride is the way to be happy. I love his attitude toward life. It gets so much better and the future is clear. It's pretty queer. <laughs> Very good. I really like that word too. That's one of my favorites. I don't know. I use it quite a bit for myself. It's like almost an umbrella term, I feel like at this point, which I really enjoy because it's like, I don't know, I'm still like 17 years old. Who knows? I just know that not straight and probably not entirely gay either. So queer sounds like a good word to me. Had little GTM seen this video growing up, I probably would have come out earlier. It's time to you know, really just promote the health and betterment of every community. If I saw this video when I was like 13, holy sh I would just play it on a loop every night before I go to bed. So he's talking about all the ways that people like bullied him. I had trash cans thrown on me. I was kicked out of school. Like I had sh go down because I was gay. I was 12 years old when this happened. So, um, I can relate to him on a lot of levels. Look at how he's used these negative experiences, these terrible experiences to create something beautiful, something positive, something that can help other people. Listening to that can be very helpful, I think, to somebody who may be getting the sh kicked out of him on the bus. Both of these videos, you know, dealt with people coming out. Could you share with us, you know, your own experience with, with coming out? So I'm kind of using this video as an excuse to come out to my parents. So I'm gonna be going home today and doing that. My dad and I had been getting into a lot of arguments. I packed up my stuff and then I ended up moving out here with my mom. And when I moved out here, one thing my dad made clear before I left was leave everything that I bought you here. So I'm like, okay. So that included my phone. My dad had gone through my phone and saw conversations with, between me and my friends about me questioning my sexuality. My dad was like just screaming over the phone. He goes like, like I don't know why he didn't feel comfortable telling me. And then my mom, like was on the phone, she goes, like, she goes, are you gay? <laughs> and I'm like, I think so. She goes, stop calling my damn phone. And then she hung up. And then like, it was, it was just, like, it was a thing. From there, I just started coming out to my friends at school, started telling them like, 
this is who I am. My partner, Joel, and I have been together for 53 years. It'll be 53 years next month. And uh, we met in our high school. Eventually, people surmised that we were gay. There was no big coming out kind of thing. It, was ju it just happened. We were around when Stonewall happened, and we would be down on Greenwich Avenue and walking back and forth with probably 50,000 other gay men. All over the world, there are gay men's choruses now. We were at the first performance of the first one. I'm <laughs> sort of get, not getting a little, you know, okay. Uh, uh, the very first one in San Francisco. For me, I lived my life in terror that anyone would find out who I was, that someone would find out that I'm this weird freak who has this kind of mental construct going on. I thought, Jesus, you're some sort of weird freak or something. There's something terribly wrong with you. I'm being victimized by these feelings that I just don't seem to control or, and I don't understand them, and there's nobody to talk to. I can't talk to anyone for the first, you know, 50 years of my life. When I got to a place in my life where I just couldn't do it anymore, where I just couldn't take one more step, one more uh, breath, actually, without recognizing the truth of who I was. And when I came to that decision, I knew that there was going to be a great price, a very, very heavy price to pay for that. And I decided it was worth the price. So I went to my bosses and I told them, and they were stunned. As soon as they could, they shoved me out the door. This was like 14 years ago. On the other hand, I have four daughters. When I told them, their response was, are you going to be happy? And I said, yeah, I think so. I think that, I think so. And they said, well, we love you. And that's all we care about is that you're happy. And they call me mom and, and we have an amazing relationship. I came out sort of gradually, I'd say around the age of like 15 or 16, this really hot Brazilian guy started like following us. And this is my first experience with a guy actually pursuing me. And obviously I've known I was gay my entire life, but I never really, um, you know, jumped on the opportunity. And then I go and tell my um, best friend, Kayla. That was sort of like the start of me essentially like going on the journey. I didn't come out to my parents until I want to say later in that year. It just took some time. And I'm, yeah, I'm happy to say now that my family's extremely, extremely supportive. My dad the other day, um, he's finishing up his nursing practitioner. He's going to be a doctor. And he called me, he was like, hey, I just want to discuss pronouns with you because it's a big thing in the medical field now and I don't want to be rude to anyone that comes into, you know, my practice. I just literally started bawling immediately because I was like, I just never thought that when I was, um, I never thought when I was little that eventually in the future I'd be having a conversation about pronouns with my dad. It gave me even more hope. I just feel like it was just like, wow, like times are really changing. The first person I personally came out to, I was in counseling in my senior year just for other personal reasons. So I was leaving a counseling session one day. He gave me an article. Actually, I kept it and I found it and I brought it with me. Um, it was just like a little, I guess, case model, just same talking about sexuality. After my counseling session, my mom was sitting in the car. I'm like, mom. Don't read this until I'm in the store. So I, a few minutes later, I come back out of the donut shop, and my mom's just bawling her eyes out. And she's just crying. Like She wasn't like sad because I was gay. She was happy. She was like, oh, I've always known, and I was, she was just waiting for me to tell her. I actually came out to me of people online before, because when I did the Choice of Vaughn video, that's when I officially said, yeah, I talked about it more, and people were like, oh my god, he's coming out. So for the longest time when anybody in my family didn't know, they would ask me about React, oh, tell them which videos have you been in? I would like, I would shut down. I would be like, no, I'm not telling any videos I'm in because I, I was afraid. You were afraid that they would they, They'd watch the video and they would find out. I didn't tell my dad, but I think one of his sisters did work because I woke up one morning and yeah, just from a text from him, he was just saying, I, was, I will always be proud of you. When I finally actually told my parents, it was in high school. I literally grew up seeing the opposition, like going to <laughs> marches and rallies and seeing the hateful signs and hearing everything that people were yelling at, even me as like a child. And I could only imagine not having any kind of support, how hard that would be. I have tons of friends who were kicked out of their house and that's why 
it's so important to be for me to be my authentic self to to every woman to come across on the show because I've fought to live this far. Words carry a lot of weight, but they're not the thing that's gonna break me. I've been through way too much. So it's really important, I think, for me to come out and talk about all these things. I was living with Laura already. My mom says, um, you know, what are you gonna do if Laura meets a guy and, and wants to move in? Then I tried to change the subject, and then there was like one more, and finally I looked at her and I'm like, Mom, I'm gay. And she goes, oh, well, that's just great. And I'm like, yeah, it's fine. I mean, do you wanna do this? Do you wanna talk about this or what? And she's like, no, I'm fine, let's just go. I wanna to run to Macy's. So I'm like, great. I'll tell your father. Laura and I went over and they had already met her a couple times and they were different to her. And so we left and I went back into the house and I just told my parents, I said, look, you either treat Laura with respect and treat her the same way as you were before you found out or I'm gone and you won't see me anymore. And so then thankfully they chose me. In fact, I've had a lot of my family tell me if we ever break up or get a divorce that they're gonna keep her, which is valid. I came out to one of my best friends in art class in seventh grade, and he was like, oh, I have a friend that's a lesbian, and her name is blank, um, and she's really cute, and like you guys would totally get along. So I hit up blank and fell in love overnight. I was 12, she was 11, until one day, uh, little Miss Haley gets called into the principal's office. Uh, the principal goes, so uh, we've been hearing rumors that you're in a homosexual relationship. I confirmed it because I didn't have any reason to lie. And she goes, we're gonna have to call your parents. I was sent to Christian therapy and uh, she was trying to convince me, you know, that I was straight throughout high school told myself I was bisexual because of all the things that I went through. The only people that I was in communication with were against me if I was gay. And I thought, okay, well then I need to be against me if I'm gay. I had a terrible, terrible, terrible time when I would self-harm really, really bad. When I was 18, I reconciled with the girl from when I was 12. We didn't get back together, but we would hang out and I would be like, oh shit. Everything is still here. The feelings are still here. It was terrifying. Then I dated a girl. She kind of showed me that it was okay. She took me you know, to West Hollywood and I saw p other people my age who were comfortable with themselves and that changed my life forever. So back to Eugene and Dan's videos. Eugene has publicly identified as queer but never went into specifics into the fact that he is gay until releasing this video. Online creators have come out in many ways over time, but what are your thoughts on how he chose to come out through dance and music through this project? Oh, beautiful. The fact that he chose to do it in an artistic way is such a representation of who he is. I think everybody's coming out is perfect because it's each their own. It kind of shows that he's still not totally comfortable. He decided to express himself a different way. It shows kids that you don't have to be 100% comfortable going, hey, I'm gay but you can kind of show in other ways. He decided to take it to a whole other level and showcase representation, culture, family, religion, sex, um, just the whole shablam of life as someone who identifies as queer. And going back to Dan, he mentioned there had been some speculation and pressure regarding his sexuality for a while now. What do you think about Dan's choice to finally come out after already spending so much time in the public eye? I think it's, it's even, harder when you have like some kind of spotlight on you it's it's just it feels like there's more people to i guess there's a disappoint it took a great deal of courage for him to do that and i'm very grateful that he did and i think that somebody's life is going to be changed by that video in some ways i think it's harder in some ways i think it's easier because it's harder because you're gonna have so many more opinions. You're gonna have people that you don't know arguing against you. But also, it's a lot easier because you will still have all the people that support you. I think when you're not a public figure, it's there's 
challenges in there as well because you have such a smaller pool of people, especially when you're in a state not like California. So this episode is being released in the month of June, which is also LGBTQ plus Pride Month, where celebrations take place across the US to celebrate the queer community. As a member of the community, can you talk about your thoughts on Pride? Honestly, like the start of June, like my my gay meter is like, woo! Y'all get every other freaking month. This is mine. I like seeing the gay pride and the we've gone to many gay parades and uh, actually I said we were the first gay course. We were also in the first gay parade. The first gay parade was nothing more than a march from the village up to Central Park. I love pride so much. It's so cool that we can just be here and like everyone can be themselves. And there are still the people holding the picket signs. It's so cool because like the community just stands up and they're like, we don't care what you think. We're still going to be our best selves. It's difficult because it's still not totally inclusive. That's the problem with the movement is sometimes they become very much whitewashed and watered down to make it palatable for the masses. But in the same token, it makes me happy like to see people who are queer or any part of this community celebrating that when there's so much shame. I have an amazing tribe of family around me. Not everybody, you know, has been able to build that tribe. And so, so walking into Pride for that moment is sometimes the first time or the one time a year that they can take that deep breath. They can be who they are and not worry about are they gonna be kicked out, judged, or whatever? When you've gone through the amount of oppression and um, non-conformity of it all, you should be able to celebrate the liberation and changes that you've made as a community and the steps that we've taken to ensure the betterment of young queer identifying people because our elders in the community had it awful. They were the ones that paved the path for us to be able to feel 100% ourselves and be authentic and express ourselves. And it's important to remember those people. Before we finish this episode, with the experiences you've been through, what do you want to say to those people who haven't come out yet, if you could give them any advice? Don't feel pressured. Literally, it is your experience, and however you choose to experience it is going to be valid. I will only tell you that it's never as scary as you imagine it's going to be. In the long run, it, it, the only way you can be happy is to live your truth. Like I said, I throw back to my Joyce Vaughn video, but if you feel like you have nobody out there to support you, I, I will be there. I will be there to support you. you. Know that you have one person in your corner. If I was talking to a friend, I would say, when you're ready, I will be here. When you're not ready, I'll be here. I'll be here regardless for you. Lastly, what do you want to say to those who have trouble accepting the LGBTQ plus community? Oh, I feel like there's so much to say. <laughs> it doesn't have to apply to you for you to accept it. And so accept and love regardless of how you feel or your opinions, because love is the only thing that unites all of us. Just be open to the idea that people are different from you and don't be afraid to ask questions because, I mean, how are we gonna get through life trying to coexist if we don't actually talk? The trans community doesn't represent a threat to you. We're not coming to marry your sons or, you know, turn people to gay or trans or any of that sort of stuff. Whatever you imagine, the trans people, whatever negatives you've you've dredged up in your mind about the trans community, uh, those are all stereotypes that are based upon fear and ignorance and all that sort of stuff. Just let me be who I am and accept me and understand that just like you, I'm a divine being. We're not going anywhere. And to be honest with you, we've been here. We've just been hiding ourselves because we were afraid. But it's about to be 2020, it's 2019, the visibility is clear, the fog is gone. From the jump, we've accepted you guys. So why can't you accept us? Thanks for watching this important episode of React. If you need help or more information, check out the links in the description. Even if you're unsure about the thoughts and topics of this conversation, we appreciate you listening and thanks for taking a few minutes to understand us. Thanks for watching guys, bye.